millions hit hard by the pandemic in the coming days that could impact Americans, better yet hurt them. Joining me now to help us break it all down is Dr. Patrick Graham, a public policy leader focused on equity, diversity, and inclusion. We also have landlord attorney Alta Garcia Pierre Altabridge. And also joining us, Jared Lodhal. He's a public affairs specialist focused on finance and government relations. I'd like to welcome you all. It's a pleasure to have you. So, Patrick, we'll start with you. you. Even if the government is not funded, how could that and the expiring eviction moratorium in some states impact black and brown communities? Well, black and brown communities face the largest incidence of uh, eviction when you talk about percentages. And so one of the things that this will do is actually limit or erase a lot of the funding for housing uh, that would have been promised actually to these communities. Um, and so when you have that happen, of course, then the states uh, don't have the resource to actually ensure that people have a safety net under them, particularly a uh, place to live. Yeah. Um, what protection are there for renters who are in need of protection as well? Because we know they're also impacted. Alta Gracia, can you hear me? Yes. There you yes, are. Yes, Shani, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Hi. 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 So okay. what people can do there? <laughs> the money's there, right? There was $46 billion, over um, over $45 billion allocated by Congress and the state governments, right, in order to help tenants with emergency rental assistance. We know that in New York, where my firm is located, there's about $2.6 billion. There was about $2.6 billion. Um, dollars allocated to New Yorkers, so um, renters need to apply for the money. I think what's also interesting about your state as well, Alta Gracia, is the fact that we had a guest and they said that it's the eviction court that's handing out the money. I, I couldn't think of a better person to be doing that. It mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you noticing so that paying off? There is a state agency, absolutely. So there is a state, absolutely. So since the new governor was uh, came into into office, uh, she has been much faster and much more efficient at, at getting the money handed out. She started a marketing campaign, right, uh, in order to get people who needed uh, who needed the most to know that this exists. The weird thing about this ERAP, the emergency rental assistant, is that it's targeting people who may not have internet, who may not have Facebook, who may not have all these things that we, we take for granted, right? So yes, the money's being doled out. If you do go to housing court, it is being doled out by an agency called OTADA, which has hired um, many, many contractors in order to um, facilitate the applications being processed. Uh, what we know is that if you're brought to housing court, one of the main things you will be told is to apply for it. So there's no way for you to avoid knowing because um, the attorney, the judge, they will tell you you should apply. Yeah, I, I, every state should do it. But I mean, if you can't pay your rent, how do you have cable and internet and all that other jazz? But what do I know? Uh, Jared, can you break down what's at stake if the government is not funded and the country defaults on its debts? Absolutely. I think the easiest answer is to check stop. So that's Medicare benefits stop. Social Security stops. Uh, federal, federal employees, they don't get paid. Troops don't get paid. SNAP benefits don't get issued. Um, so I think there's an immediate stop in dollars that flow from the federal government to Americans, whether they be employees or folks who receive benefits through various entitlement programs. But you're going to also see a ripple effect in the markets, right, where if we, do, if we default on our debt, well, a lot of debt around the world is held in American bonds. And so that means interest rates will go up, right? So for your consumer debt, that means your credit cards, your mortgages, so forth, the cost of the risk associated with the American dollar goes up because our faith and full credit is in question if we default on our debt. Uh, and so the, 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 the consequences, I think, are potentially devastating. And even though we have a stopgap measure in place to keep the government open through December, there's a broader question of whether or not we can keep it funded. And Treasury will want to run out of dollars potentially in mid-October, as well, was the, the previous understanding. So, you know, again, I, I still think until we raise that debt limit, which I think is still an open question that Congress is still having to figure out, if we don't pay the bills that are already due, this isn't new money, this is dollars for spending that has already happened, you will see lots of Americans who no longer have that check in the mail that they expect every month, who don't get the benefits or who don't get paid. 
Uh, and you can imagine how that would affect black and brown folks who over-index uh, as folks who live on fixed incomes, federal employees, the post office, you name it. We over-index in terms of our, our, you know, how much we receive from the federal government. So the, the, the consequences here are potentially catastrophic. Absolutely. I mean, when you think about the wealth uh, and equity, uh, inequality as well, uh, typical black household uh, holding about $24,000 um, in wealth, according to Brookings Institute, with the white family having almost eight times that. Um, right. So we already know how that's going to impact us. Uh, Patrick, if the government is not funded, how could that affect the relief uh, money that renters and landlords are so desperately waiting for right now? Well, as my good brother just mentioned, uh, one of the things is that money stops. And so you already have promises out there. Remember that this debt ceiling is to cover existing commitments, necessarily new ones. And so if you can't cover your existing commitments, then that means that many of those people who are dependent on eviction prevention dollars, states that were dependent on it, landlords that want it, they all lose. And so ultimately, uh, we're going to have to raise that become a way of a more equitable tax formula that actually allows billionaires and, and multi-millionaires to pay their fair share. Yeah, and we also know that will impact our credit as well. Um, so that just adds another layer to a dire situation. Um, Alta Gracia, uh, we got to go, but I'd like for you to get the final word. So, I mean, folks need to apply for the rental assistance. There's a lot of money out there, right? Um, so far, it's still out there, right? Uh, again, in New York, it's $2.6 billion. Um, folks should seek the help of an attorney, paid or unpaid, right? Um, there's a lot of re there are a lot of resources to divert um, evictions, right? Uh, and talk to the landlords. Tenants should talk to landlords. Landlords should talk to tenants, payment plans, right? Uh, deferments, anything that's needed, uh, abatement of rent in order to, to stop the evictions from occurring. All right. Thank you uh, to our illustrious panel for joining us. It was a pleasure. One of the questions being asked in Texas these days, where did all the Haitian migrants go? And what about the ones who tested positive for COVID? That story coming up next when BNC Live returns. Closed captioning brought to you by Nutrisystem. Lose weight and get healthy with meals delivered to your door. Introducing hearty inspirations from Nutrisystem with up to 30